Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I want to show you how to split the base for effects processing in Reaper. I have a project in front of me here, and I want to treat the base separately for the low end and the high end. And luckily, we could do that easily in Reaper. Let's hear what it sounds like now. I look the other way. I don't see how it's got anything to do with me. Oh, hurry, I need... Let's hear it without the vocals so we can hear the bass a little clearer. So like I said, I want to treat the bass separately for the lowest or the deepest area of the sub bass separately from the top end or the aggressive frequencies of the bass. Now I like to do this on separate channels so I can blend them in the mixer later. But let's start by separating the sub bass on the bass track. Let's go to the effects and we're going to search in the filter splitter. There's a few plugins over here that are going to split our bass into separate frequencies. We only really need two bands, but let's just choose three and just not use the third one. Double click it, and it looks like this with crossover points that split our bass into separate frequencies. We'll put the highest one all the way up, and we can adjust this so we just hear the sub bass, which is chosen if we go to our pins or the pin connector, we can see right here, just the low end is getting through. So we can adjust the crossover frequency right here. Right now we're just hearing from 200 Hertz down. Bring it up. That's normal. Now to fine tune it more, we can hold down control on the PC or command on the Mac and adjust it with more fine tuning. Now the purpose is just to hear the sub low end so we could treat it separately from the top end or the rest of the bass before and after. Somewhere around 100 sounds good. And we could see it with a meter. Let's choose the frequency meter right here. Before, it looks like this. And after, it looks like this. With the top end rolled off, and we're just hearing the sub bass. So we can treat this completely separately. Like compress it or EQ it, and just tighten it up completely separately from the top end or upper mid range. Let's remove this, and now we could add other processing for the sub bass. Let's start with a compressor. I'm going to choose the 1175 compressor, which goes after our splitter. So it's only going to work and control the sub bass, not the whole bass guitar. Adjust the threshold. Let's slow down the attack. Bring up the makeup gain. But 
before and after. Notice how it controls the dynamics of the sub bass. And when mixed back in with the other bass, it won't pump quite as much as the different frequencies are treated separately. So now let's duplicate the bass, duplicate tracks, we'll name this one lows, and this one highs. And now we'll work on this one. Let's bypass the compressor and go to the splitter and change our pins with the pin connector to only work on the mids, as we're not using the highs. So now, with this brought up and this set to 100, we're only going to hear from 100 up. And when mixed back in with the other track, it should sound complete, even though we're treating them separately. So now to compress just the top end. Right here, again, we'll use a slower attack and adjust the threshold. Notice how it controls that top end or the more aggressive area of the bass. And now I want to add some other effects that I think works well for this track. But keep in mind, every song or track is going to be different. Don't feel like you have to use the same effects I use. The whole purpose of this video is to show you that we could separate the sub bass and the top end and treat them separately and then mix them together. So I'm going to add a distortion plugin. I'm going to start with the wave shaping distortion as it tends to bring up the presence or make the bass sit more up front. Before and after. And now I'm going to add another distortion plugin on top, but this time a more aggressive one. I'm going to choose Distortion Fuzz. And this goes after our compressor and this distortion. Let's switch this to stereo, and by default, it's going to sound very distorted. Let's turn down the mix, bring up the dry, and slowly blend it to just bring up the top end and make it sound more aggressive, but subtle. Before, and after. I know it sounds pretty aggressive, but we blend it in with the other bass, it should sound more subtle. So now, let's close the effects, let's open up our mixer, and now we have two different bass tracks, our sub and the high end. So let's blend them together. Let's select both of them so we can adjust them together in the track. Although we can hold down the shift key to adjust them separately.
And to hear the difference, let's duplicate the first one, duplicate tracks, let's delete this effect, alt on the PC, option on the Mac, put this one back to zero, and let's compare the two versions. Notice the low end is more loose. And we can always readjust how much distortion we hear by going to the effects and readjusting the wet mix over here. Let's hear it with the vocal. I look the other way. I don't see how it's got. Notice how it sounds more controlled. I look the other way. I don't see how it's got. And it's more interesting and creative in the upper frequencies. I look the other way. I don't see how it's got. Like I said, we can add any effects we want, maybe EQ or other compressors, and treat the top end completely separately from the sub, giving us more control in the mix, having two faders instead of one. So that's pretty much it. That's how to split the base for effects processing in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh!